Phantomaniacs, welcome to the newest episode of the Needless Things Podcast, where we talk about toys, movies, music, and all manner of pop culture dorkery. I am your host, Dave, and it is time once again for a Q&A episode. I have reached out to the internet and asked for questions from all of the Phantomaniacs, and once again, we've got some great questions, uh, and we've got some, you know, not so great questions, but that's okay. Uh, not all of them can be winners, and we we treat everyone equally here on the Needless Things podcast. Even uh, people who are trying oh so hard to be funny. So uh, I'm going to get to these questions in just a minute. First, I, there's not really any news. I'm not even going to do the sting because all of the news is San Diego Comic-Con toy-related type news and that you're going to have to wait until next week to hear when I sit down with our head of research Ryan and we talk about all of the toy news from San Diego Comic-Con which granted isn't actually happening this year but everybody is getting on the internet and acting like it is there were tons of reveals today lots of stuff that I'm super super stoked for that I really want to talk about right now but I'm not going to do it because we got to have something for next week's episode and plus this is right now this is just Thursday so we still have Friday and Saturday probably not a lot is going to happen on Sunday but there's still two big days left for reveals so uh tune back in next week for uh ryan schweck and i talking about everything that happened except for gi joe you're going to have to wait until the next week for that because not only will we be presenting episode two of the audible interlude gi joe podcast we will also be recording a special supplemental episode to cover whatever news might come out of uh, this virtual Comic-Con that's happening and the tons and tons and tons of reveals that have happened since we recorded episode one. So two big episodes of the Audible Interlude podcast the first week of August. And then uh, please go back, listen to the first two episodes. There's episode one and then there's Mission Zero. Excuse me, I had to get a little sip of water there. Uh, so go listen to both of those. And then, first week of August, two more Audible Interlude episodes drop. And we will tell you on those episodes how you can win, free of charge, I'll ship it to you at everything, a brand new G.I. Joe classified Snake Eyes figure from Hasbro. So... Add Audible Interlude to your listen list, and you will be able to win a free G.I. Joe figure. Just tune into those episodes, and we'll tell you how. Uh, all right, lots to to go down on the question list today, uh, but before I get to that, I'm, I've got to do a little bit of intro pitter-patter, even though this whole episode is kind of pitter-patter. So uh, I'm on day two of five 12-hour days. I've explained my new work schedule to you guys before. I work five twelves i'm off for two i work two twelves and then i'm off for five and then it starts over again working five twelves in a row is rough i'm not gonna lie but then it makes the two others that i work seem like nothing and then the five off obviously uh you know right now it's not the best time to have five days off in a row it's not like we can go do anything we can't go to like dollywood or, or anything but just having five days off is fantastic i find that i'm much more productive for a much longer period of time uh, i've gotten so many things done it's just this schedule and i can stay on day shifts with the schedule so that's great so today at work i'm trying to follow along with all the san diego comic-con reveals uh and then at Let's see, it was 1 o'clock. Well, at noon, Mattel Creations put all of the Mattel exclusives up. 
on their site completely missed that because I was focused on NECA's Comic Con releases for today, which were a glow in the dark alien, uh, the lightning effect predator, um, the Ninja Turtles box set, and then one other thing that I really didn't care about. I think I think there was one other thing. Oh, a uh, Gremlin. Which, their Gremlins figures, excuse me, I got a piece of ice stuck in my mouth. I can't do anything about it. I apologize. I believe I got a piece of chicken stuck between my teeth, too. Uh, delightful, delicious chicken made in the air fryer and crusted with uh, bagel seasoning, everything bagel seasoning. It, it comes in, my wife gets it from Aldi. It comes in these jars, and you just sprinkle it on literally everything i put it on black beans i put it on broccoli she crusts this chicken with it that she makes in the air fryer and it's incredible next time i'm sure lots of different places carry this stuff but it's everything bagel seasoning and it is phenomenal anyway i got a piece of it stuck in my teeth it's gonna ruin my life but we gotta get this done right right okay so anyway i'm at work and if you remember uh, Mrs. Troublemaker, the aforementioned maker of Fantastic Chicken, got me a $25... Well, okay, she got me a $50 gift certificate to the Super 7 store, which is an actual retail site that carries Super 7 products. Tons and tons of stuff on there. Uh, I could have bought something immediately, but I knew San Diego Comic-Con was coming up. I knew they would have an exclusive or two that I wanted, so I waited. And sure enough, yesterday... A glow-in-the-dark Baxter Stockman from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate line went up as a Comic-Con exclusive. It's going to be the first one of those that I have in my hands. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get it. Uh, So I got that. Covered. Done. Easy. Easy peasy, as Oscar would say. And if you're not following her YouTube channel, you really should be. Uh, So today, I have a $25 gift certificate. From the NECA store, which is not really a retail store. Uh, there, There's not really anything on there to buy. When I got the gift certificate, there were two $400 Child's Play dolls and the uh, SOD, Sergeant D figure, which I already had. And that was it. That's literally all that was on there. So, at some point, they put up some... Oh, the Casey and Raphael 2-pack, the Ninja Turtles 2-pack... And it's for international customers only. And, and I've explained all of this. I'll just gloss over it real quick. I had contacted NECA and was like, look, I, there's nothing I can do with this gift certificate. What? Can we? Can you let me buy something some other way? Can we, you know, refund it? I, you know, I want NECA product. I just, just can't get anything through this website. This is worthless. And they were like, yep, too bad. And that was, that was essentially their response. So I was like, well, I'll hang on to this until San Diego Comic-Con, and hopefully they'll have something to sell to American customers. And look, I'm thrilled that they're offering stuff to international customers. Uh, I have no problem with that at all. Matter of fact, if that NECA website was only for international customers, and it made it easier for those guys to get these products, I would have no problem with that. As long as they made it clear that gift certificates for this site are not going to do Americans any good. And we won't sell them to you. Matter of fact, I went to... There's a website called Zavi that carries a lot of uh, products that are exclusive to American stores and sells them internationally. For instance, the Casey Jones Raphael 2-pack that's exclusive to Target. Zavi just sells it. And they'll ship it anywhere in the world. But then there are... Some other items that I'm not going to talk about right now because I got to save it for the GI Joe podcast that they are carrying and will only ship internationally. And when you put in that you're an American customer, those items don't even show up on the website. So something like that, do it, do it. It's fine. Don't even let me go to the NECA store website. Sell to those international guys. Let them get their stuff. But take care of your loyal customer of like 22 years now whenever the hellraiser line was 99 98 something like that uh that is always in NECA's defense as far as i think they're doing the best they can look at they're working with what you know whatever whatever anyway long story longer i get on today go to the NECA site boom predator alien up available for sale awesome i'm stoked did it put them in the cart i've got my gift certificate code popping in there um and i'm on my phone and nothing happens i try to press the checkout button nothing happens nothing happens nothing happens i'm like all right i close that out uh i get on 
the PC at work, which I don't like doing, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do. Got on the PC at work, went to the NECA site. They're still there. Put them in my cart. Uh, go to checkout. Predator disappears. Fine, the alien is the one I wanted the most anyway because it glows in the dark. Go in, put in my uh, gift certificate code. It accepts it. Uh, choose the shipping. Pay with PayPal. Done. Boom. Thank you for your order. Get the email. Your order number is boo boo boo. Your order's complete. Bam. Done. I am so stoked. I send Mrs. Troublemaker a text with a picture of the alien. Look what I got. Thank you so much for my Father's Day gift. I did the same thing with the Baxter Stockman. Yay. And she sends a little kissy face back with hearts. We love you. La la la. Hey, yay. But an hour later, I get an email from not even from NECA, from PayPal saying that my what the difference that I paid because obviously this $25 did not cover an expensive alien figure plus shipping uh, the difference that I paid between the $25 uh, and the total has been refunded to my PayPal account by NECA the $25 is just fucking gone just gone not accounted for in any way I have no email from NECA no nothing I am furious obviously uh i it says if you have any questions contact us i hit the contact us i type a letter i said first i need to know why this was canceled second i need to know where my 25 dollars is please respond to this as soon as possible i mean i'm i'm mad i want to get online and curse them out but i'm not going to do that because i love NECA. i love that company uh so i wait a little while and i get an automated response no, that's not the email I got an automated response from. So I, I sit and I stew for a little while, and I think, well, a lot of times people get NECA to respond to them on Twitter. So I go on Twitter, and I say, hey, uh, I briefly explained the situation. I'm probably a little coarse about it, but I don't care because I'm furious, and they they have stolen money from me. That is a fact. That is, There's no way around that. They have stolen $25, not from me, from my wife. Uh, I, I'm really, really angry, but I, like I said, I don't want to shit all over them online because I love the company. Uh, so I know that Matt Cardona, the one of, one of the guys who runs the major wrestling figure podcast, which I love is pals with Randy Falk, who, who is the head of business or whatever design. He's the big, bad booty daddy of NECA um, and I'm like alright I don't go in the that Facebook group to, to talk about things that aren't wrestling figures but there's a shaking with anger thing that's kind of been a, a, a bit of a verbal meme in there so I said you want to talk about shaking with anger I explained everything that happened in the hopes that maybe Matt Cardona would see this and be like let me you know nudge randy or, or do you know maybe something i because i have no idea what to do because in the past anytime i've had problems with neca products or anything at all from neca i i have not had a lot of luck with getting responses but this requires a response because they have stolen money from me uh oh and by the way my assumption is they canceled my order because somehow or other i came up as a bot because that's one another great thing and that to put them over again neca after they do these sales they, I don't know if it's a system, I don't know how it works, but they go through and cancel orders for multi, multiple orders to single addresses um, and, and other criteria that indicate sales were made to bots or scalpers or whatever. That's freaking awesome, and I love it, except for the fact that it got me, who's just a guy trying to spend $25 on their stupid website. So, anyway, uh, I... I get a response in there from our pal Bob Burke, which if you want to go back and listen to the Glow Mania episode, you absolutely should. Bob is awesome. Can't wait to have him back on the show. Uh, and that episode was so much fun. I uh, got a response from Bob, and he said, hey, uh, you should probably try to contact Randy. He's a great guy. He helps people out with stuff. And I don't know how to contact Randy Falk. I'm not, uh, even though I've been doing this for a decade, I don't have any ends. I got nothing. So he sent me his Instagram uh, profile which is private so we'll see how that goes uh, but I'm not going to bother that guy because I know he's busy right now look even though they've stolen money from me I know those guys are busy and I know this might take a minute to get resolved and I have all faith that it will uh, and then I sent a message to NECA's 
Instagram, which I expected nothing from, but I actually got a response that said, it wasn't the nicest response in the world, said, sorry about that. I don't even know if it said about. I think it just said, sorry about that. Let me, you know what? Let me pull my phone up here. So I sent him a message, and uh, it is, wait, is am I under the right profile? It is tough having multiple profiles. Okay. Yeah, it is. Sorry about that. Please send an email to, and they gave me an email address that was different from the other one, the contact us address. Uh, and I said, will do. Thank you. And my message was, I'm doing my best to contact a representative about my canceled order and the $25 gift certificate that was not refunded as part of that cancellation. Uh, I, I wish I had written more, but I really wasn't expecting a response from this account. Uh, so I sent an email to that address and immediately got a, due to COVID-19, some of our response times, blah, 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 blah. It's actually I, the last email I got when I was inquiring about the gift certificate in the first place, like a, a form email. So I wasn't too happy with that, but I'm giving them a day. I'm giving them until tomorrow at like three or four to respond to this thing. Maybe not even that late, but like I'm giving them at least 24 hours to get back to me via email because I don't want to be bugging these guys and harassing them on social media. I know they're busy. I know it's San Diego Comic Con and they're excited and they got stuff going on. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to be as patient as I can be while retaining my righteous indignation because this is pretty fucked. Uh, yes, it is. You know, you might say, well, it's just a figure. I, I don't even look, I do care about the figure, but the figure is not the problem. The figure is the $25 that is just gone for reasons I don't fully comprehend. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's what's been going on with me today. How, how are you doing? You doing good? Yeah? Okay. All right. Is it time to get to questions? I think it's time to get to questions. Uh, here's, you know, I'm going to do this. I am going to go into the Needless Things podcast Facebook group, which you should join if you had not, if you have not. But you have to answer all three questions. All three of them. They're very, very simple, but you got to answer them if you want to get in the group. And if you get in the group, you can interact in polls and see news. I just posted uh, some toy news in there that I'm not going to talk about on the show, but you get some neat pictures of stuff that's coming soon that people are excited about. Uh, so the Needless Things podcast Facebook group, I'm going in there right now and typing, recording now, last chance for questions. And we'll see if we get anything out of this. And if we do, I will answer them as they come in. Uh, all right. So my point here was to go back to my profile. Ooh, Facebook doesn't work like I remember it working. I'm so used to using Facebook on my phone that uh, I don't even remember what it's like to use it on a desktop i can't seem to find oh because i clicked on it in the group it's only showing me my group stuff you guys i apologize this is some amateur hour bs you're having to deal with right now as i scroll through stupid facebook looking looking at as i go the new youtube reviews for the super seven ultimate radioactive glow toxic crusaders toxi figure so go check that out. Go to Needless Things on YouTube. Check out my review there. And my review of the single carded snake eyes that we're giving away. No, we're not we're giving away one that's mint in box. Um this one I opened it up. I reviewed the G.I. Joe classified snake eyes and I compared it to the exclusive version that came out. So those are both up on YouTube now on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Please go check those out. Uh all right. Here we go. I've got the two questions that I needed. I'm going to leave this right here. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me just copy this guy and put him, Mr. Clever Boy. We're going to put him right here. Little paste a And then we're going to take this one. And we're going to copy it. Still amateur hour, folks, and I apologize. This is 
I'm sure very compelling to listen to. And there. Okay, so that is the final two questions from the ones that were asked when I solicited the other day. And look at this. Noah Holt. Oh, that's not the right post. Sorry, Noah Holt. I'm not answering that question. All right, let's go all the way to the questions that came in last time and see what we have here. From Mr. Bobby Nash, who may have three questions answered this round because they're oh wow what just happened uh may have three three questions answered this round because they're all good and uh i don't have quite the volume i've had the last couple of times so uh bobby nash question number one when the quarantine madness sets in and this was asked like towards the beginning of quarantine i just haven't gotten to it yet which action figure will be the first one to speak to you well probably bobby nash this one That right there is a talking Pee Wee Herman mint in box, which I don't normally do, but the box looks so great. Uh, It's got graphics of all the Playhouse characters on it. It's got Penny, Conky, and Terry on the side. It's got Billy Baloney on the back. It's got um, the dog from the band who I can't remember his name, Cherry and Globy. Uh, All these really charming, cartoony renditions of all the Playhouse characters. And the rest of the box is this weird plain. Uh, I don't you. I don't know if you remember the Pee Wee official brand logo. It was like a cartoony Pee Wee Herman that was around in this era. But uh, it's a it's a big talking Pee Wee, and it's fantastic. And it's in the box, and it's it's. I'm very very proud to have this still in the box, still functioning. And I look. I know I probably need to get them out of there and get those batteries out, but. For tw- that's 20 years old, what you just heard. 20 years old. So, Bobby Nash, uh, obviously that's going to be the first action figure that speaks to me. Uh, next question, Robert McIntyre, our friend from across the pond, who I probably need to get on for one of the international collecting episodes. Uh, okay, I, full disclosure, I could not find my notes from last episode. I am... Not a hundred percent positive these next two questions were not answered, so I'm going to kind of move by them fast. Uh, but I don't think I did because they were in older notes, they weren't read, which means I didn't answer them yet. So, anyway, Robert McIntyre, what's the most valuable thing in any of your collections to you? It doesn't have to be the most valuable in money, it could be valuable because of a memory or its history. Uh, and I, I think I did answer this, but I'll say it again. Uh, our friend Selena Balls, who you'll be able to hear as part of Needless Con that's coming up soon, uh, made a Phantom Troublemaker vinyl figure for me that is breathtakingly beautiful. Uh, and, and did it without, uh, you know, it wasn't commissioned. It wasn't anything. Matter of fact, I think she might have even said, hey, w- would you, uh, I'm working on something for you. Send me a picture. Something along those lines. Uh, and then, you know, I sent something and she responded back, no, no, one with clothes on. And I was like, oh, okay, this is like that kind of thing. Um, I'm, I'm kidding, obviously. Uh, but she painted this incredible Phantom Troublemaker figure. It is, you know, vinyl figure style, but it's spot on. It's incredible. My mask, my jacket, uh, everything about it, it, it is my 100% most prized possession out of anything in here if there and and horrific proposition but if there's a tornado or a flood or a fire or whatever and i can only grab one thing you know that age-old question that vexes collectors every time it's asked that is the one thing that i'm grabbing as far as you know my bullshit possessions go obviously i'm getting my family out first but uh and the dogs but uh yeah that if i can only bring one toy that's the toy that's coming with me uh, all right, uh, and this is another one that I don't think I answered, but I'll kind of get through it fast. Uh, from our pal Arian, uh, or, or as you may know him from the 100th episode of the Needless Things podcast, uh, Negative Nelson, 
lovely member of the Needless Commentary team. Who is your favorite cast member of Jackass and why? And then, uh, parenthetical, keep in mind that if it's not Chris Pontius, Party Boy will be sad. And I, I need to explain to you right there that way back in the day, myself and Arian and some of our friends would every Wednesday night get together to watch the TNA Wednesday night pay-per-views. So this was like 2002 or so. And actually, I think we were doing it before that, getting together kind of regularly. And we would play WWF No Mercy on the Nintendo 64. And we had all of these crazy created characters. And one of them was Party Boy. Uh, so, and, and he was, we, we, he got a push. He got a pretty decent little push. I think he might have ended up our equivalent of the IC champ at one point. Might have even gotten a world title match in there. But we, we love Chris Pontius. We love the Party Boy stuff. But... Everybody get ready to be sad because my favorite jackass uh, was Ryan Dunn. Is Ryan Dunn. Uh, That guy seemed, you know, they were all in that era. They were all kind of assholes, but entertaining and endearing assholes. But that guy, for whatever reason, struck me as sort of the most sincere. His... uh, he was never overly cruel as some of them could be sometimes. And he just, uh, if you've seen the Bam Margera movie Haggard, uh, Bam, I think wrote and directed it. Uh, Ryan Dunn is the star and, and look, it's, I say movie it's, it's a jackass project essentially. That's not under the jackass banner. Uh, it is a feature film, but it's, very amateurish but ryan dunn acts in it like he's he's good he's convincing he's endearing uh i just like that guy i liked watching him do stuff i liked watching him act i thought he was cool and uh it it really really tore me out because he's around he was around my age uh not my age now my age then like we're we're i'm around the same age as all those guys i think they're a bit younger than me uh and it it tore me up uh, when that guy died I, I was i was actually pretty upset about it because it felt like somebody that i had been relating to for years and that uh i don't know i get i get i was big big into jackass not you know not because they kicked each other in the balls but because of the camaraderie because it was this group of guys who clearly loved each other and and spent their lives together doing things together uh, and it was, you know, as, as crass and dumb as it was, it was also beautiful. And, and I, I loved those guys and I spent, you know, a number of years being a fan of their work. Uh, when Steve-O got clean, I, I it, it really, I, I loved it. I, it, I was delighted. And to this day, I follow that guy on Instagram and every single day I look at him and I see how clean he's living and how happy he is. And it makes me happy. Uh, cause you know, with these, these, uh, Some of these celebrities are above us, and some feel like, you know, but for a few different choices, you know, they could have been us. So there's a relatability to those guys. But anyway, I've I've gone on for far too long about something called jackass. Uh, But yeah, Ryan Dunn's my guy. And then I just real quick, I want to mention, though, that out of all of the jackass projects... My favorite was Wild Boys. I, I I still watch that show regularly. I would say probably once a year, uh, I throw those seasons in and just burn through them. I, I adore that show. It, it it really is. It's so stupid, but so sublimely wonderful. Uh, Manny Puig is my hero. All right, moving on. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we've got a question that came in live from our pal Mike Gordon. What is, man, Mike, I hope I can answer this off the top of my head. Uh, What is a favorite wrestling moment or feud that you would like to see captured in figure form? That one's easy. Thank you, Mike Gordon, for giving me one that's literally always at the forefront of my brain all the time. Here is the box set, my dream box set from, you know, Mattel or whoever could make it. It would have to be Mattel. Um, I want a set that includes the MTV studio set from, uh, I can't remember if it was TRL or Hanging with MTV or what it was, 
It's got a couch. And it comes with a figure of Diamond Dallas Page with the United States title and a figure of Raven. And I think there was a giant stop sign as well. I think Raven came out and whacked the shit out of Page with a stop sign and just stole the U.S. title. And from that point was like proclaiming himself U.S. champion. But one of my favorite all-time feuds, maybe my favorite feud, was the DDP and Raven feud. And them appearing on MTV for that segment for an actual, you know, it's not a real title change, but it was because, you know, in as much as titles even matter, that to me was a title change. Uh, so for that to happen on MTV and that incredible feud with those incredible guys, I want that immortalized so badly. And I want it in like a gorgeous window box package with the page figure sitting on the couch and the Raven figure posed behind him with the the stop sign lifted up and you could even throw like i don't i don't remember who the host was carson daly whoever it was at the time i don't know uh, you know what make it tabitha soren i know it wasn't her but i want a tabitha soren action figure uh, but that's what i want that's my dream set always has been my dream set and i think about it like constantly and i hope raven gets back in wwe's good graces so that set could be potentially possible someday Good question, Mike. Thank you. Uh, All right. Uh, Brad Ladner, who uh, we had on the show years ago for his incredible Batman collection. Uh, If you look up Guinness Batman Needless Things, I think you'll find that episode. I don't know exactly what number it is. Uh, Brad Ladner. Breaking down the problem of evil from a paradigm of it being on a scale of capacity of regret, extrapolating that maybe meaning or lack of meaning in and of itself defines morality. Um, well, I mean, the capacity for regret is, I think, an essential component of how we would grade evil because if you don't have the capacity for regret then wouldn't you be considered evil and actually this is a very interesting question because i just read uh a book called harleen by stefan (laughs) sidger stefan sevigic something like that stefanic stefanic i don't know uh look up dc comics harleen uh, I just finished reading it. It's fantastic. And if you want to know the answer to Brad's question, go read Harleen because it addresses it fairly thoroughly. It's a, it's an awesome, awesome book. It gives us, you know, it's one of those year one type things. It's basically Harley Quinn year one, uh, and it's awesome, and I love it. The art's incredible. The story's amazing and engaging. Uh, and actually, I kind of want to read it again right now. So thanks for listening to you guys. I'm going to go. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not done. I can't be done. All right. Uh, moving on, just because I'm going in order, here's another one from Bobby Nash. No, wait, that's the first one. I doubled up. I'm sorry, you guys. What a mess I am today. I'm all broken up by the NECA news. Um, okay, Bobby uh, Bobby Nash question number two. Okay, serious question. I thought the first one was a serious question. Of all of the announced San Diego Comic-Con exclusives, which are your favorite and why? And then parenthetical, I've already ordered the plush Jaws. Okay, so of all of the announced. So as of right now, I don't think everything has been announced, but I'll go ahead and say just from what I've seen, Oh, gosh, that's a tough question. Okay, so the Baxter Stockman is my, that's my, like, gut answer. But yesterday, or Tuesday, no, Tuesday, Hasbro had a Marvel Legends panel, and they showed the Marvel Legends, well, they showed two Marvel Legends exclusives. The first one is a two-pack from Logan, the movie Logan, with an absolutely incredible looking Hugh Jackman, two alternate or one alternate head, you know, one's regular, one's all bloody, um, two alternate set of hands uh, with bloody claws. So this is the first ever Marvel Legends figure to feature blood deco. And it blew me away. As soon as I saw it, I was like, is that blood? Couldn't believe it. And then uh, Professor X, Patrick Stewart in the wheelchair, hence the decrepit old Professor X. This set 
is amazing. Must have for me. Uh, I am avoiding some of the other movie X-Men stuff because I just can't deal with anything Brian Singer had too much of a hand in. But uh, that set, got to have it. As a matter of fact, I might even cancel because I did pre-order a Hugh Jackman Wolverine that's an Amazon exclusive because I just love Hugh Jackman as Wolverine. I might cancel that now because having the Logan one kind of supersedes that for me. Uh, But as great as Baxter Stockman is and as much as I cannot wait to have that first Ultimate Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figure in my hands and do a video review on the Needless Things YouTube channel, which you should go check out and subscribe to right now, my number one item, the thing I cannot wait to get, the thing that I wasn't sure I'd want because I didn't know how they would do it or who would be in it, is the Hellfire Club box set. It includes Sebastian Shaw, Donald Pierce, uh, Jean Grey as the Black Queen with an alternate Celine head and Emma Frost. And it's got alternate hands and accessories and all kinds of other stuff. Donald Pierce has regular hands and cyborg hands. Um, well, who's to say cyborg hands aren't regular hands? He's got uh, flesh hands and cyborg hands. Don't go to fleshhands.com. Or if if you do, if you're under 18, ask your parents first. Uh, but this this is the Hellfire Club. Because they've been teasing this Hell, Hellfire Club box set for a while. But you don't never know with Hasbro what they're going to do. It could have been the kids, which would have been cool, but I wouldn't necessarily have wanted it. Uh, It could have been a number of different things. Uh, It could have been like the movie version, which granted a Kevin Bacon figure would be phenomenal. But this is the Hellfire Club that topped my list. So this is a must have. It's the coolest thing. It's the thing that tugs at my heartstrings and my nostalgia the most. It hits me right in my classic, uncanny X-Men loving soul. Uh, All right, let's see. Next question, Samantha Johnson. Novels versus graphic novels versus movie adaptation of Dark Tower. If this isn't if this isn't a niche question, I don't know what is. LOL. Uh, it's you know I don't know that it really is that niche, but it's a good question. I could do a whole episode on this. And as a matter of fact, uh, Nicole Gould Cadaver and I have talked about doing an episode along these lines a few times. So I'm not going to get too deep into this one because that's likely to be a future episode. So for now, I'll just say this. The movie was garbage, and not just a garbage adaptation. It was a garbage movie, even without the Dark Tower name on it. Because a lot of times, when an adaptation is a shitty adaptation, I'll still recognize its merits as a film, like The Shining. Shining is not a good adaptation of the book, but it's a it's one of the greatest movies of all time. Uh, Dark Tower is a fucking terrible adaptation of, of any version of Dark Tower you can think of, and it's a shitty movie. It's just crap. Uh, and I say that being a big fan of Matthew McConaughey, being a big fan of... Uh, his name just fell right out of my head because I feel badly for talking badly about him. Uh, I'm a fan of the cast. I'll just say that. I didn't watch Luther, so his name doesn't jump right into my head. Now I've got to look it up because I feel like a jackass. All right. Doop, 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 doop. More typing. Don't you guys love to listen to typing and scrolling? Isn't it just the best? Wow, it's he's so embarrassed his name doesn't even pop up right off the top. Idris Elba. Come on, Dave. Looking bad on the show. <laughs> I wish I had thought to say DJ Big Dries. Is it Dries or Driss? I tried to watch that show where he's a DJ, and it was a little too mellow for me. Uh, But anyway, Idris Elba's great. Uh, Cast him in anything as long as it's going to be good. Just don't put him in other shit like Dark Tower. Um, All right. Anyway, moving along. We, We will, Samantha, at some point there will be a full episode getting deeper into that. Um, But movies garbage. The comic books are absolutely worth your time up to a point. I just devoured them when they first started coming out when Peter David and Jay Lee were the team um 
I, I was all over those things. And then as I got further and further along, I felt the, like they were kind of padding more stuff out. And then they did the classic Marvel thing of launching like three different titles at the same time or something. Like it just got overwhelming and I had just dropped it. Uh, but I enjoyed the comics quite a bit. But the books, The Dark Tower is my favorite book series. It's my favorite Stephen King work. Uh, I think it's incredible. It's legendary. I love it. It's not something I'm going to walk up to Joe Average on the street and be like, hey, man, you've got to read Dark Tower. Because I get it. I might say that about just the gunslinger. Uh, but, you know, I'm not going to I'm not going to throw the burden of getting through all of those books on on some stranger. OK, moving along. Derek Obscura of the Casket Creatures. Go check out his uh I think he's got a Patreon now. Uh, I think he's got a big cartel store. Uh, he sells uh, like his underwear and socks or something like that. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, go check his stuff out. He's great. He's awesome. Uh, he's, he's a sweet little Canadian fella. Uh, top three wrestling promos. Oh, and by the way, uh, well, he's been on a bunch of episodes of the show, but go check out uh, Triple Slam, which is where... He and I and Ryan Cadaver sat down and commented on three of our favorite wrestling matches. And we were supposed to do a series of these, but those guys are tough to get together. Um, all right. So top three wrestling promos. Uh, number one, well, in no particular order. Uh, this is not number one. This is just the first three that popped into my head. Uh, uh, CM Punk's Pipe Bomb, for sure. Although, I think you could compare almost any of his ring of honor promos to the pipe bomb promo, but they didn't happen on a nationally televised show. So they do not have the significance. They just don't quality wise. They're just as good. Uh, if you can get your hands on any of the best of CM Punk ring of honor DVDs, I strongly recommend you do it. Uh, you will see, you will see his raw talent and you will see he was always as good like j just phenomenal talker uh this one may surprise people it may not a miz on talking smack the promo he cut on daniel bryan while daniel bryan was still inactive uh miz cut the promo of a lifetime it should have changed his career and, and look the guy still hovers around the the top of the card and is a made man in WWE and has what a hell of a life. But I really thought after that promo, he was going to shoot through the stratosphere. And, uh, he, you know, he, he had a, he had a run, but it didn't, it didn't change the world. Like I thought it would, uh, especially once Daniel Bryan came back, they, to me, they never paid off on that in a satisfactory way, but, you know, that's WWE, that's wrestling, whatever. Uh, I recommend you track down Miz on Talking Smack and watch that promo. It's it's one of the best I've ever seen. Uh, and then the, this one's kind of snarky, but I couldn't help myself because I couldn't narrow down a third one. Uh, literally any Ultimate Warrior promo. And I say that because that guy sucked in the ring, but people loved him and it was because of his presence and the way he was on the microphone and the energy he brought to the ring which to me all works into the term promo so literally anything warrior did ever is one of the best promos of all time because for him to get himself over with his very limited ability and endurance uh is incredible so hats off to that guy because what a dynamo, uh, you know, not just on the mic, but the presence that he brought into the ring and into the buildings. Uh, okay, uh, moving on. Lacey Kingston, uh, my sister, as a matter of fact. Have you seen that Target is partnering with Galaxy's Edge to release exclusive park merchandise and new Black Series pieces? Uh, I have seen that, and I have kind of mixed feelings about it. Uh, I think theme park exclusive merchandise should be theme park exclusive merchandise. Uh, I cheated. I look, I st I'm going to reach around behind me right now and pull out, uh, from galaxy's edge, the smugglers run three pack that comes with Hondo Anaka, 
some Porgs, Ray, and Chewbacca. Uh, Ray, not yet Skywalker. And tell you that I had to get that for Hondo. And every time I look, I haven't even opened it yet because I still feel guilty that I had to get our pal Rad Ranger to get it for me because I I had no idea of the next time. This was pre-pandemic. I had no idea the next time I would be in Orlando at the Disney parks, and I didn't want to miss out on this set because that Hondo figure, you know, a lot of times theme park exclusives, you never see them anywhere else. Uh, and I couldn't miss out on that figure. So, so I asked him, he brought it up for me, and, like, I love that I've got it, but I feel a little weird about the fact that I didn't buy it myself from the theme park. It's kind of like autographs for me. Autographs mean absolutely nothing to me if I didn't get them myself. Uh, I have a photograph of Clive Barker with all of the Cenobites in full makeup. It's signed by Clive Barker and Doug Bradley. And it's cool. I've got it on the wall, but it means nothing. A friend got it for me. It even says to Dave, uh, a friend got it for me, but I didn't get it myself, so I have no attachment to it. Uh, that's just how I am with signatures and autographs. I don't care about them a bit if I wasn't there when the item was signed. Uh, so theme park merchandise is kind of the same way. I feel like I need to get it myself. So Target carrying this stuff, well, one, I guess it means it's no longer theme park exclusives. It's just Galaxy's Edge branded merchandise. Uh and, you know, eh, I think it's great that they're bringing the vintage collection, or it wasn't vintage collection even, uh, a legacy collection. I think it was Millennium Falcon, because uh, I've got that. It is, I think it's the greatest toy I own. As a matter of fact, I think I even at one point answered with that in one of these Q&As that it's the greatest toy that I own. Uh it's incredible. Every Star Wars fan should have one. If you only have one Star Wars toy, that Millennium Falcon should be it. And it's four hundred freaking dollars, and it's worth every freaking penny. I kid you not. It was a theme park exclusive. I don't know that I realized. Like I, it was. I was peripherally aware that they were doing that, but uh, it's it went up on Target, much like and and. Ryan and I will talk about this more in the San Diego Comic-Con episode. Um, Target exclusives, uh, this hurts me to say, are worse than Walmart exclusives. Because so far in the past two weeks, I've gotten every Walmart exclusive I want. And I have gotten zero Target exclusives that I've wanted. Uh, This thing went up, sold out instantly, along with the other desired items from the Galaxy's Edge stuff, which was a uh, the red Stormtrooper Captain Cardinal, I think his name is, and then a droid from the new... I think it's from the new... Uh, Star... Whatever replaced Star Tours. I can't remember what it's called now. Um, it's a droid from that, but they're both Black Series figures. All that stuff like sold out in, in seconds. Uh... Now, supposedly, that Millennium Falcon will be back in stock and may even hit stores, I think. So, here's the thing. Kind of not related to this question. If if you guys are any kind of Star Wars fan, you have any kind of Star Wars toys, and you see this thing, do what you can to buy it. I know it's a shit ton of money for a toy, but I guarantee you will not regret the purchase. It's absolutely incredible. And in this day and age, we don't get things like this. So if you can get your hands on one of these Millennium Falcons, do it. Just do it. Just figure it out. Put put it on the credit card. Figure out a payment plan. You know, be responsible. But just figure it out and get one. It, it's gorgeous. It's incredible. It, it opens up. It's huge on the inside. It's got... Uh, it's, I, I could go on and on. As a matter of fact, did I do a video review? No, I reviewed the ad ad. I don't think I reviewed the Millennium Falcon. Uh, but you can always go check out the Needless Things YouTube channel and see. Because I'm not positive. There might be a video review of it on there. Uh, okay. i got to move along. But anyway, my, my feelings... Uh, eh. 
I would rather theme park exclusives stay theme park exclusives, even if it means I can't get my hands on the stuff. But if they bring things I want to Target, I'm probably going to buy them. If they start putting those Build-A-Droids on blister cards, I'm going to buy every single one of them, especially those new color change ones they've got. I I have to have those. But, I again, who knows when I'll be back in Orlando. So that's how I feel about that. Uh, moving on. Okay, here's another. Okay, Gary Mitchell, friend of the show, uh, lovely co-director of the Sci-Fi Classics track, has a... Uh, great question like he does every time what is your favorite electronic feature a toy can have and which one that you own is your favorite um well i think i just answered that question that millennium falcon has lights and sounds and is my favorite but let's break this down a little bit more so the my favorite electronic feature a toy can have well you mean single feature so it can't be lights. I can't say lights and sounds because that's two features. Uh, and he specified electronic feature, which means it is limited to lights and sounds because anything that's motion or any kind of movement is a motorized feature. Now, there may be electronics involved in that motor, but I don't consider that an electronic feature. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my own personal opinion. And I'm the one answering the questions here. Uh, So, basically it comes down to lights or sounds. And that's a tough call. Because when a toy has lights in a certain way, it can be very impressive and it can add a lot to the playability of that toy. And the visual element of like a Star Wars vehicle, it's so critical to have those little features. But on the other hand of that... Uh, or the other side of that, a sound like the Millennium Falcon engine breaking down or the Millennium Falcon in flight. Like, which one is more important to me to have the lights in the cockpit, on the front, in the back, or the sounds that simulate stuff the Falcon actually does? And it's a tough call, you guys. Um, it, It really, really is. But if I have to pick one... I would go with sound. Now, (laughs) I mean that by 2020 standards, where you get literally sampled pieces from the films or whatever, or the voices uh, of the actors, depending on what it is. Uh, I've got a talking Bruce Campbell that if I'd thought about it a little bit longer, I probably would have brought him out here instead of the Pee Wee doll, uh, even though he's not as old. Um, lights can look really cool, but the sounds, there's nothing like a toy making the sound it's supposed to make. You know what I mean? Like, that, that and I've said it three times now, that Millennium Falcon breaking down noise is one of the most iconic noises in science fiction, if not in film entirely. And to have something that makes that noise is fantastic. Another great example. Turning around behind me, I wish I could get up and walk over there, but I'd have to take the headphones off. It'd take too long. Uh, But I have, from the 25th anniversary G.I. Joe collection, they did box sets of Cobra and G.I. Joe. You know what? I'm going to pause this so you can hear these. Hang on just a second. Okay, so... I hope I don't get tagged for copyright on these. Hopefully, since it's coming from a source other than the computer, it'll be okay. But those two box sets, there's a G.I. Joe box set and a Cobra box set, and they each came with these plastic, almost like plaques. They're these these thick, cool plastic pieces, but they do this. And then Okay, obviously, like, let's say, oh, damn it, I didn't mean to do that again. 
I mean, I kind of wanted to, but let's say I'm going to I'm going to turn both these off. Okay, let's say these same items. Uh, the GI Joe one is the GI Joe logo. It's just a 3D plastic thing, but it's cool and chunky and heavy. And then the Cobra one is actually the Cobra symbol. Uh, let's say that instead of playing those songs, these lit up. Well, whoopty fucking shit. Who would care about that? But they play the themes, and the fact that the Cobra one plays the greatest G.I. Joe theme from the movie is just incredible. Uh, so yes, sound. I will go with sound, but still, my favorite you know, my favorite piece combines lights and sounds, and it's that Millennium Falcon. Uh, all right, let's see. We've got time for a couple more questions. Let me jump back onto Facebook and see if anybody else asked any live here. Uh, nope, just Mike Gordon. It's a busy Thursday night. People don't have time to be sitting around on Facebook asking my goofy-ass questions. Um, All right. Moving on. Ryan Cadaver, also the Casket Creatures, friend of the show, member of the Needless Commentary team. Please go back and listen to our Needless Commentary for Top Gun on last week's episode. I think it was last week's episode. Uh, All right. Sip of water. Because we're getting deep into this thing now. Ryan Cadaver. Super 7 is doing a deluxe figure of King Diamond. It's actually an ultimate figure, Ryan, but that's okay. What other rock god do you want to get that treatment next? So, if you're not familiar with Super 7's Ultimate line, I've already mentioned the Ultimate Baxter Stockman that's part of their Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles line that's a revival of... It's a. It's basically... You remember Masters of the Universe Classics? Of course you do, because you listen to this show. Masters of the Universe Classics were modern updates to the original He-Man toys. Uh, that's what the Ninja Turtles line is. That's what the Toxic Crusaders figures that they've put out now are. They're not new figures based on the media. They're new figures based on the toys. But they all have that classes, classics aesthetic just done in a way that's appropriate in this King Diamond figure, when they teased it, I was really curious what it was going to look like because you can't just put a King Diamond head on a He-Man body. That would have looked stupid. That's what they did with the Conan figure, and it looks terrible. I'm sorry. It just doesn't look great. Uh, But the King Diamond has different proportions. He's slim. It looks fantastic. Incredible. So what that... To me, the real revelation of that, it was badass enough that they're doing a King Diamond Ultimate figure. Sure, of course. But the real revelation to me was the different, the completely different sort of look they were willing to go with. And granted, we've already seen all of the Ninja Turtles and how Shredder and the Foot Soldier look different. But for some reason, this King Diamond seemed like a, a, a yet another step away from from just being off of the Masters of the Universe Classics buck. So it opens up a whole new world of possibilities. And the first thing that jumped into my head with this question was Guar. I mean, the fact that we haven't had... In in the modern age of adult collecting, with companies like NECA and Mezco... And, you know, all the other ones that have fallen by the wayside, Art Asylum, uh, you know, all these companies out there. And nobody has done a good set of Guar figures. I mean, there's not even really a good odorous figure out there. They've, they've been some. There have been vinyl toys. They've done, But there's never been a, a real Guar action figure. Obviously, Guar is the first choice for the Ultimates line. Can you even imagine? Go look at this Toxic Avenger figure or Toxic Crusader figure that they've got. And tell me they couldn't do Guar that would blow your freaking head open. But that's too obvious. So obvious that as I'm talking about it, I can't believe they're not already working on it. Uh, The next one that popped into my head, and this is because of sort of the look of the King Diamond, was Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash would be bad ass just man in black and you could down the road you know i would want a a younger johnny cash at first but down the road you get the old man johnny cash in the trench coat um but the younger johnny cash you give him the the middle finger hand you give him a guitar um just that look that cool man in black look holy shit that'd be a badass figure but at the end of the day 
the one that I would want to get the treatment next, the one that I think has to have a figure at some point, and granted, my ideal would be a Mezco 112 collective figure, but this is not really an arena they've dipped into, so I think Super 7 could kill it too, and that is, of course, Prince. Of course. My gosh. And limitless versions of Prince could be made. My my top number one choice would be Prince in his yellow jumpsuit from the performance of Get Off on the MTV Video Music Awards. That would be my number one choice. But that would not be the one I would want made first because you, you save that one or you make that one a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive maybe. My number one Prince figure would be a Purple Rain Prince with a removable soft goods trench coat and shirt so he can have uh, it, it wouldn't be necessarily from the movie Purple Rain it would be from the live show um, from 1984 I think it's a it's a Prince live concert you can find it on YouTube it was included with the deluxe edition of Purple Rain that came out in 2015 I think it was uh, but over the course of the co- show, you know, he comes out in the trench coat, and over the course of the show, he loses the coat, he loses the shirt, he's just shirtless, finishing the show up. It would come with a guitar. Um, I, this, everybody would have to have this Prince. Everybody. every Super 7 might as well just send out emails like, hey, everybody, we signed you up for the Prince, just send us 45 bucks. We know you want it. Like, my mom would want this. No-brainer. Now, I don't know... There are Prince Pop toys, which, fine, great. I don't know where the Prince Estate is on actual action figures, but I hope somebody's thought about it. I hope somebody's working on it. Uh, I I would buy any kind of cool 112th-ish scale Prince figure. Like I said, my ideal would be 112 Collective, but Super 7 could absolutely kill it. Looking at that King Diamond figure and thinking about a Purple Rain Prince done in that same style, whoo, it would just be so good. Uh, all right, let's see. What do we got? We got, uh, you know what? I think that is going to wrap it up for now. I've got a few good questions saved for next time, which I think August will definitely be seeing another Q&A. Uh, but I'm I'm all hot and bothered from talking about Prince. So I think this is where we have to close the show out. You guys, thank you for listening. Thank you for subscribing, for liking, for sharing, doing whatever it is you do to be part of this crazy, needless things thing. Uh, go to that YouTube channel, like, subscribe, share the videos, find a video review you like, share it on the internet. Uh, be sure to listen to Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. Two installments coming the first week of August. A regular, Our second regular episode. And then a special drop that's going to be all about all of the G.I. Joe news from the past like month. And there's a ton. Uh, follow Needless Things Podcast on Instagram. Follow Phantom Troublemaker on Instagram. Join the Needless Things Podcast Facebook group. Let us know what you think. Send some questions my way. I'll answer them next month on the episode. Anybody that sent questions for this month that I didn't get to, I will get to you next month, including Arian's compelling second question, uh, which that would have made two questions for him, so that would have been fair anyway. And then Bobby Nash had a third question, so that's that's all got to wait. You know what doesn't have to wait? What doesn't have to wait? I don't know, San Diego Comic-Con doesn't have to wait because it's happening now. So next week on this show, you will be able to hear everything cool about San Diego or about online Comic-Con, stay at home con whatever you want to call it. Uh, and I also have two new video reviews ready to go because that's how motivated I've been on the Needless Things YouTube channel. Should I tell you what they are? 
Uh, I don't know because they I mean, they may change between now and then because I've got a couple other things coming in that may uh, kind of push one of those to the side. So I'm just going to say the two things I've recorded are exciting. Tune in. I love you guys. Thank you for listening to the Needless Things podcast. You're the best. You can find the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Downcast, or in the ears of a Trader Vix employee. Love you. Mean it. Uh-huh.